You're welcome back. It's still uh, uh, the, the breakfast on uh, Plus TV Africa. And today we're talking entrepreneurship. That's what we deal with on Thursday. And so it's so important that we talk about this. A short story, Maureen. Nope. Uh, when I was in secondary school, uh, you know how I made money? One, mm -hmm. I'll be writing reggae music, <laughs> you know, nope. for people. And then they'll give me some money. I'll use that to buy textbooks. And then I graduated into making cross crosses, very beautiful crosses with, with my pen knife. And then I will sell to the people. And when they give me, I'll be comfortable in the school and all that. That was a side hustle, you see. What are going with that business, man? <laughs> Calm down. I wasn't singing the reggae. The Ras Kimonos and the rest were singing it. I was writing and making the money. But you know, that's what it is. You, you find a side hustle. If you cannot do it as just something that you need to do, but you find it as a side hustle, fine. But in this our economy, business is good. But the question that everybody asks is, where do you even go to to find that which will enable you to start a business? And that's what we're talking about in our second hot topic today. And we have the pleasure of having with us uh, the CEO of our bar, and his name is Tunji Andrews. Tunji, uh, we're glad to have you join us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Okay. Well, a lot of people right now are thinking business, not just as a side hustle, but as something that they need to do. But the complaint is maybe the, um, the, econo uh, the, the climate, rather. The business climate is not favorable enough. And even if it's favorable, how do you fund the business? How do you begin to fund the business? Where do you find the tools to start a business? That is the question we're asking. And we're hoping you can provide answer to that. So what do you do if you need to start a business in Nigeria? Um, I think generally the thought for me is usually that if you're going to start in business, it usually needs to start from a problem. Um, and in solving that problem, you have to, you're able to find customers who can then pay you for solving that problem. So I think the original context is to find a problem and in you know, solving that problem, you're able to then walk towards the tool. So there, there are tools available for everything. So you want to uh, sign up, uh, you want to get registered to CAC, there are tools for that. I mean, you can even just go to the CAC website and do a business registration. Um, you want to be able to collect payments. There are um, services all around. I do not want to mention particular brands, but there are fintechs that allow you to be able to have a... Uh, a storefront, so to say, where you are able to, you know, display your wares and, you know, take payments digitally into a, uh, a payment wallet that, that you'll be able to then cash later. Um, so there are many tools available, especially in the tech space that will enable you to start a business with little or nothing, so to say. But um, my usual um, advice is you want to start from a problem and then walk back towards, you know, um, finding the solution and then getting people to pay for it. Entrepreneurial is not something that is something that, it's not something that most people are very at home with. And some people have blamed it on the education sector, the kind of uh, syllabus that we run, the kind of um, materials being given to our students from the early stages of life. Um, can the system do more to prepare the people for the future in terms of enterprise? So I'll say this, right? Um, I don't think so. So, like I said earlier, problems are what creates entrepreneurial um, ventures. Um, so what you just mentioned is a problem in itself. <laughs> the fact that people are not... Um, uh, you know, given the right edu um, entrepreneurial education while in school, there are people who are actually out there solving this problem. Um, there are startups like uh, Money Africa um, and, and the rest who do exactly, who solve what you're speaking about right now, who try to help people understand finances, who go out and teach people, okay, this is how you do uh, business. And so, um, I think the more problems you have in the society, the more opportunities there are for people to be um, entrepreneurial. Um, your co-host said earlier about him uh, writing lyrics for um, artists. 
that itself is entrepreneurial because there are songwriters uh, all across the world who actually write songs for a living. So, I mean, it's the, the general fact that there is a problem means that there is money to be made. And, um, you know, Nigerians can always plug into that because, I mean, we live in a problem. Uh, it, we, live, uh, we live in a country where there are problems almost everywhere. So, I mean, there's, that gives the opportunity for money to be made in, in almost every place you turn to. Yeah, but the problem is not we not finding the problems. Like you say, we live in a country where there are problems everywhere. So these problems, say these problems are identified. How do you even get the money to start? You can have a very lofty idea, but you don't even know where to go to. Uh, for instance, there's someone who went to Bank of Industry to, to look for a loan that can enable them to start a business. And they were supposed to bank there in the bank of industry for like seven months before the loan can be granted to them. And they will be depositing some money, uh, the same money he has gone to look for, you know. So you have to bank here for seven months. After that, we see your financial statement and see if it is good enough, and then we can give you a, a loan, the same loan. So these are some of the bottlenecks that we face. Are there alternatives? Or do you think what the government is doing right now is good enough? So there are many alternatives. Uh, so you're speaking about funding right now, and I, I, I think one of the things that um, the, the evolved startup ecosystem is created is new funding opportunities for small startups, small businesses, SME. I, will, I can tell you categorically that there's almost nothing you're doing in, as a business venture today that doesn't have a grant available. And when I say grant, that is um, equity-free. It's basically like free money for you to do a business. There are all sorts of international organizations that are looking to um, support businesses in your space that will give $1,000, $2,000. There's the Tony Elumelu Foundation, which gives up to $5,000 if you are able to create a um, viable business plan that they feel is bankable. It's not like, you know, that $5,000 you are giving anything in return, but you just need to be able to prove that this business can work and you get up to $5,000 from them. They're, they're all, they're organizations across the world. There's the Jack Ma Foundation that will give you up to $500,000 if you're able to prove that the business makes sense. So for, I think the first point is to just Simply Google your space and Google grants, available grants, and you see all the kind of grants available to your particular business across the world. Then after you've gone from there, there are also the, the accelerators who basically are created to be able to help startups, you know, um, structure their businesses. This comes with a bit of, you know, giving equity, but it's still one of those places where you can get up to $50,000, $100,000, $120,000. I think one even gives $500,000 at this particular time. Uh, but you need to be able to convince them that you have a business that can scale. And once you're able to do that, they take you into the accelerator, help you go through a crash course for like three months. And, you know, I think you even get the money at the beginning and you go through a crash course, which prepares you for more funding going into the future. So I don't think money... I mean, money, to be honest, money can be a problem, but I don't think that um, it's entirely the problem in itself. Because, like I said, there are grants available if you're just uh, responsible to be able to dig and, you know, look around you to find them. Oh, um, let's talk about those people who do not have the kind of ideas that can be described as bankable enough to get these kind of grants that you've talked about. Because... Enterprise too, it's, it cuts across. Uh, some start big, some start small. What would you say to someone watching right now who says, but I really love to start a business, but I do not think I have that kind of, you know, idea that you're talking about. And I've listened to some, um, what do they call them, motivational speakers who have told me that all I need is have <laughs> idea and feel good about myself. What, what would you say to such a person? First of all, quick note, I do not like motivational speakers. Um, I, I don't think they have a place in the world. But anyway, that's not that. That's just my opinion. Anyways, um, so I'll say this, right? Um, we live in a technology 
uh, technology-enabled world. Um, if you look in history, uh, you would notice a few things, right? So the first thing is that about three, four hundred, five hundred years ago, um, for you to be rich in the world, you had to have land. Uh, so if you looked at people in, you know, Bible, Quran times, you would realize that the richest people either had a lot of land or had a lot of cattle, right? Uh, come back to about 200 years ago into the last 50 years for you to have, uh, to be able to make vast resources or vast riches, you had to have mineral resources. So oil, you know, you had to have some sort of, you know, discover some sort of mineral resource in your, in your state or your country. Um, from the last 20 years into now and possibly into the next maybe 100 years, you'd have to have significant advantage using the internet. And you find, you know, billionaires who are coming through people like uh, Elon Musk, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, and the rest. So whatever business you're doing right now, if you can't find a space for it on the internet, then there's a problem. Uh, that's the one way that you're able to find resources to be able to back the business. And I'm not saying that you come up with an idea like, Tesla. I'm saying whatever you're doing right now can be enabled by the internet. I, I, I don't care what it is. Fashion. There are online fashion uh, shops that you can sell using the internet. Uh, what is it? Get anything. You, you are a mechanic, right? There are online um, auto repair shops. Um, I, I mean, literally anything you can think about can be enabled via the internet. And the fantastic thing about it is that once you're able to structure that business in such a way that you say that you can sell to multiple people using this available channel, there will be people that will be able to back it. So yes, it is not that they do not have the um, idea. They do already have the idea. They just do not see how the internet can enable that idea to reach more people. So what, you, what backers want to see is that this your idea, instead of it just reaching the people in that your local government, it can reach thousands or millions of people. And so every business idea is, can do that. Bottom line is make the internet your friend, no matter the level of your business idea. Exactly. Get to embrace the internet, especially today, the 21st century. <laughs> Okay, Thank um, you so much. we will follow you up uh, behind the camera and see other things that we can get because we know that people will bombard us with questions that we may not be able to answer. We hope that you will give us that opportunity to get the answers to them and talk to our, our watchers, our viewers rather, uh, on the show. Thank you so much. You. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much, Tunji Andrews, for coming. Tunji Andrews is a CEO of our, our bar and he's been talking to us how to um, go into business so everything is available to you you just need to look and then you will see it well we'll take a short break now and after that we'll be joined by our sports uh, analyst Mukta uh, Mukail Tinubu who will be here to tell us what is going on in the life of, um, in the world of sports just stay with us A match billed as a possible title decider between the current champions Manchester City and would-be champions Arsenal. The Blues had their midfield maestro to thank on the night as he pulled the strings in the middle and opened the scoring for the home side in the 7th minute and a second in the 54th. Manchester City would grab their second goal through John Stones after initially requiring the video assistant referee to confirm the defender was onside during a set-piece attack on Aaron Ramsdale's goal post. It was a miserable night for the Arsenal number one as Erling Haaland wrapped up the scoring for Manchester City with his 33rd Premier League goal of the season in the 95th minute after Rob Holden had pulled one back for the Gunners in the 86th. Manchester City now go into the final games of the season with two games in hand on Arsenal, needing just a draw in each of those games and winning the rest as they have a higher goal difference than the London club. The Nigeria under-24 mill handball team lost to the host Bulgaria on Wednesday to open the IHF Emerging Nations Championship. 
The team under coach Solomon Yola was aware that beating Bulgaria would be a monumental challenge, but they were still ready to pull off an upset. Unfortunately, they ran into a brick wall in the opening period, which resulted in a 13-11 and victory for the home team. Nigeria's improved performance in the second half didn't go as planned as Bulgaria, who had the support of the home crowd at the Palace of Culture and Sports in Varna, ended strong to win the game 23-19. and Nigeria will now play Azerbaijan today. Uh, at 5 p.m. And that's all the sports update we have for you on The Breakfast. My name is Mikhail Tinubu. Thank you and have a good day. We wrap up today's uh, show, The Breakfast. Remember, today is Entrepreneurial Thursday, and mm -hmm. we'll leave you with this quote of the day. If you're so religious, maybe we'll, we'll call it uh, uh, the memory verse. Uh, so in the words of Zig Ziglar, you don't build a business, you build people, then people build the business. That's how it's been. My name is Nyamgo. And I am Maureen. Do have a great day.